Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I am Prashant. I am a project manager at Open Targets. And today I'll be talking about Open Targets platform and genetics uh, and how we use these uh, two portals to help uh, in drug target identification and prioritization. So here's a brief outline of my talk. I'll be introducing the Open Targets consortium. I'll be talking about the two products that we have, uh, the Open Targets platform and genetics portal how we help uh, in collaborating and provide all the data uh, as open source, uh, how people have used about uh, open targets and the summary. So let's uh, jump into it. Uh, so as you may be aware, uh, and as Sarah mentioned, drug uh, discovery is a very lengthy, costly process with very high attrition rates and very low success rates. Uh, and many drugs fail in the clinical trial because of lack of efficacy or safety. Um, and uh, there's a huge amount of resources and time that goes waste. Uh, the first step in the classic drug discovery process is to select a target. Uh, and this could be either a gene or a protein uh, whose modulation we hypothesize will benefit patients. Once we have the target in mind, uh, we stand to create uh, and test these drug candidates that will perform the modulation selectively. Uh, and we think uh, in terms of a high therapeutic hypothesis, for example, modulating this target will benefit this disease. There are a lot of other considerations, but target selection is what kickstarts this whole process. Various studies uh, have looked at the success rate of different compounds throughout the clinical trial phases and compounds that are uh, have a lot of direct genetic supports are more likely to process through the pipelines. So drugs are eight times more likely to succeed if target um, identifies has Mendelian genetic evidence and two times more likely if they have GWAS evidence. And we also looked at uh, the F2021 FDA drugs approved and at least two thirds of them had human uh, genetics evidence. So the more information we have about the target, the better chances of creating a compound to modulate it. Uh, and Open Target uh, was uh, founded to address these challenges in two ways. Um, so first, we integrate the existing public data that provides um, help uh, in associating target with the disease. And we also generate a lot of experimental data that support uh, causal associations to provide a new uh, understanding of disease biology. So Open Targets is an innovative, large-scale, multi-year, pre-competitive uh, academy industry partnership. Uh, and we use genetics and genomics data generated by our experimental and informatics uh, program for systematic drug target identification prioritization. A lot of buzzwords here, but I'll be explaining them over the next few slides. Um, so first uh, is our uh, industry academia partnership. So we have... Uh, seven different complementary institutions. Uh, so there are two uh, academic institutions, uh, EMBL, EBI, and the Sanger Institute. They have expertise in uh, handling life sciences data as well as uh, in generating uh, lots of experimental data. And we have five uh, industry partners, GSK, BMS, Sanofi, Pfizer, and Genentech that bring in the industry perspective of what Pharmaceutical is industry, industry is looking for drug uh, target identification as well as their expertise in the therapeutic areas. And we have the research program, which is the experimental research program that focuses on oncology, uh, immunology and inflammation and neurodegeneration. So this uh, generates a lot of target centric data. Uh, and we have the informatics program that aggregates all this data as well as the publicly available data to provide this uh, through the two portals. So to understand our knowledge cycle, uh, the informatics portal uh, projects take in the public data to enable researchers to build hypotheses. Uh, and th this data can be accessed in different ways to test these hypotheses. Uh, following on from this, uh, our experimental program takes in those hypotheses to bench and generate uh, new ideas. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the two informatics uh, portals, the Open Targets platform and the Open Targets genetics. So the Open Targets platform is a data integration and analysis tool. Uh, it has over 20 different data sources uh, 
for drug uh, target and disease associations. We support uh, various approaches to access those data and it's all open source. And uh, it's released uh, on a quarterly basis and this is the link uh, to access the platform. Uh, so to understand uh, our data model, we have three different entities. The first entity is the target, which we define as a naturally occurring molecule that can be targeted by a medicinal product. And we use EBI's Ensemble database uh, for this information. Next, we have the disease or the phenotype. Uh, this is the second entity and we use the experimental uh, factor ontology for uh, classifying these uh, and these can be rare or common uh, diseases. Uh, and the th third entity is the drug like molecules. Uh, so we use uh, EBI's Campbell database uh, and we define these as any bioactive molecules with drug like properties. The true power of the platform lies in connecting the evidence uh, and in analyzing these uh, between the target uh, and the disease. So uh, each entity is a evidence uh, and that gives information that can be linked from a target uh, to a disease. So let's say, for example, there is an approved drug uh, in the Campbell database uh, and we know its mechanism of action. Uh, so which means which molecules it targets. Uh, and we know its indication, so which disease it's used for. So this constitute as a piece of evidence that links that particular target to a disease. Uh, and we use over 20 different data sources. Uh, some of them you might have heard of uh, to connect uh, all these uh, evidences. Uh, and these evidences are uh, then characterized into seven different types, uh, genetic associations, somatic mutations, drugs, pathways and systems biology, text mining, uh, RNA expression and animal models. Each of them have uh, a particular association score uh, and we used harmonic uh, scores to calculate these. So as you can see on the right uh, side, uh, there's a drug, uh, there's a disease that we have searched for AML and it shows up a table uh, where there are various associations of uh, multiple drug targets. So the darker the shade, uh, the stronger the evidence. Uh, uh, one point to note is that the association scores uh, provide a sense of amount of data, not necessarily the confidence uh, of that uh, target. So to give a uh, how a user navigates through the platform, uh, so you start with the home page by and you can search by either a target, or a disease, or a drug. Uh, next, uh, you go on to a uh, a disease uh, profile page uh, or a target uh, associations page. And you can, if you search a disease, you will see list of targets. And if you search a target, you'll see a list of associated disease. If you click on any of these, uh, you'll land up in the disease target associations page where each of the uh, score uh, has a particular profile. And you can see all the evidences there. Uh, and then you can go to each of the entity profile pages as well to mo know more about the target diseases uh, or the drugs. And as I said, these uh, platforms are updated regularly. Uh, so one example uh, and recent one is where we used NLP uh, to classify why clinical trials were terminated. So here you can see uh, we read over 28,000 uh, clinical trials uh, and these uh, were then fed into the platform to. Uh, understand why clinical trials uh, were terminated. Another example is the entity recognition in our bibliography. So we revamped uh, our entire uh, literature pipeline and with the help of EuroPMC, um, we now can extract target disease drug relationships between various scientific literatures uh, that are highlighted. So as uh, recent uh, updates to the platform. Um, just an example of this, um, we recently integrated CRISPR brain uh, from uh, CRISPR data from the CRISPR brain project. We have new uh, gene essentiality widget, uh, new uh, drug molecules and warnings from Campbell database. Uh, and these are regularly updated. Uh, so previous, before this release, we also integrated uh, preprints and patents as well as various uh, target safety evidence from AOP wiki. So as the platform currently stands, there are over 62,000 drug targets, uh, about 24,000 diseases, 12,000 different drugs uh, with 7 million uh, 
disease target associations and 15 million uh, evidence string. And you can read uh, more about the statistics uh, on our community page. Uh, as I said before, uh, the genetics evidence is very important for determining the likelihood of uh, clinical trial success. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, like evidences that uh, we feed into our uh, platform uh, and some of them are genetic evidence, but we also have a separate uh, product called open target genetics. Uh, and we created uh, open target genetics with the goal of identifying uh, target disease associations from GWAS and functional studies. Uh, so how do you, uh, the challenge is how do you go from a variant associated with uh, disease to causal genes and open targets uh, genetics was uh, established to identify uh, this challenge. So this uh, resource uh, provides users with uh, harmonization and integration of large uh, genetics and functional genomics data from UK Biobank, Pingen, uh, GTEx portal. Uh, it, analyzes this data and helps uh, your, uh, provides a result of uh, complex uh, statistical analysis. Uh, and it also provides uh, users with prediction of likely uh, causal genes underlying complex disease and traits using a machine learning pipeline, which is called locus to gene. Uh, so to give a summary uh, of the open targets uh, genetics portal, we uh, generate the fine mapping data from UK Biobank, uh, GWAS catalog, and the FinGen portal. Uh, we find uh, this, uh, uh, we find shared susceptibility loci, prioritize genes uh, at associated loci, uh, uh, create disease, uh, disease and disease molecular trait co-localizations. And then all this data is then fed back into the open targets platform uh, to connect genes with known drugs. Uh, and uh, users can also visualize um, associations between traits, uh, variants, and uh, genes. So all this data uh, is uh, open source. Uh, and I'll be talking about uh, the various steps that you can access the data from. So there are a number of ways uh, that you can use to explore and analyze our data, uh, depending on the complexity of your research question. So to begin with, there are uh, the simple uh, user interface uh, where you can search and browse uh, one target disease or drug, and then you can go through the evidence and associations page for that. Uh, you can download this data uh, as a CSV uh, format, uh, and these can be uh, these are suitable for single entities or uh, single uh, target disease associations. There's also API, GraphQL API that uh, allows for la uh, language agnostic access uh, to the data. Uh, and uh, you can construct uh, these queries based on uh, what you're looking for. Uh, and this uh, helps uh, support uh, access to the single target disease drug. Uh, but this is also one uh, query at a time. Um, if you want access to the entire broader data, so we have partnered with Google Cloud, where we have uh, stored all our uh, data in the form of uh, SQL-like queries on Google BigQuery. Uh, that, uh, that is free freely available to the public, uh, and they can be easily accessed using Google's interface. You can run uh, complex queries on this uh, and export uh, and copy the data for downstream analysis. If you want uh, our entire data source uh, that is provided by the EBI, uh, by the EBI FTP. So you can download our entire uh, data, including the uh, direct and indirect uh, target disease associations, the relevant entity associations. Um, and uh, you can use this to build your own platform, create your own pipelines uh, from the beginning. Uh, all the code is also open source, so it's available via our GitHub repository. Uh, and the, uh, all the code bases that we use are uh, also available under uh, Apache 2.0 license. The good thing about Open Targets platform uh, and the genetics portal is CC0, uh, so which allows for users to consume data, both for academic and uh, commercial use as well. Um, and uh, how we support uh, this data, so we have a very thorough documentation uh, on our portal and uh, we 
also have the open targets uh, community page uh, to help users answer the query. Uh, and if you please use our data or code, please cite our latest publication. Uh, so just to give a last uh, example of how uh, people have used open uh, targets. Uh, so it has been used as a uh, tool to prioritize uh, drug purpose, repurposing opportunity, aiding in uh, Crohn's disease uh, as a uh, data resource for constructing knowledge graphs uh, and identifying uh, novel drug targets. A great example is the molecular targets platform, which is a a uh, platform, customized platform by the National Cancer Institute, uh, Childhood Cancer and Data Initiative. So this is mainly focused on pediatric cancer where they took uh, a part of Open Targets platform and integrated uh, patient specific data onto it. So to summarize, Open Targets is a, a industry academia partnership. It supports uh, identification of uh, drug targets and their prioritization. It's open source, completely freely available uh, integrates multiple uh, omics data uh, and you can search for target disease evidence underlying associations uh, and various drugs uh, thanks to the uh, team uh, and all our partners um, for their effort uh, and thank you Hey, great talk, and yeah. So, um, so it's it's great. First, that uh, it's great that open target data is available as a CC zero. That's really appreciate as a, one of the potential user of the, your platform. So, um, then my question is that you do have like the um, industry partner and the academia partner. Mm -hmm. how, can you comment on like how the industry partner involved in this project in as like a potential data provider or use case? Um, yeah, some. Sure. So um, first of all, industry partners, they bring in the industry perspective because they are the ones who are mostly working on uh, like progressing clinical trials. Uh, and they have expertise in the three uh, uh, experimental fields uh, that we use. So they help us ideate on that uh, and prioritize various projects that uh, we fund to generate uh, data from. Uh, so they help in collaborating that. Uh, they also help us in guiding how we can improve the open targets portal or giving user feed, direct user feedback uh, and uh, help us think about new features and new data that we want to integrate into the portal. Thank you, Prashant. One more question. Hello, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Very interesting work. Um, just curious about like how computationally intensive it is when a new uh, target is introduced in the application because it seemed like it's a very complex ecosystem. So what are the challenges that you guys face in, in terms of computational costs and computational um, scalability when it comes to uh, adding new items to your databases? Yeah. So uh, we have uh, uh, a system for it. We have uh, designed quarterly updates. Uh, so we only update uh, at a quarterly basis. Uh, and we gather uh, data from all the providers. We have a week for that. So there are uh, release cycles uh, for each of the release. Uh, there's some timeline for uh, getting the data, then uh, processing it, uh, making sure it's in the correct form, uh, checking and validating the schemas for that and then running our entire uh, pipeline on Google Cloud. Um, so we um, have collaborated uh, with Google and since it's an open source project, we do uh, get some sort of discount from them. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how they also support. And uh, there are various other partnerships. So the same data is also available on AWS uh, through their open source data initiative as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's thank, thank Prashant again.